Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. I wrote Aging Powerfully, an Amazon bestseller about aging with power from any age. I know people in their 30s and 40s don't want to think about aging and they don't like that word, but it's going to happen. And I know because I work as a health coach with a lifestyle medical clinic that if we take care of the things that matter early on, we don't have the things to deal with later on. So my lifestyle medical background and my own personal habits um, have led me to embrace a whole food plant-based diet, meaning that I don't eat animal product, haven't for going on three years now, but I eat massive amounts of beans, grains, tubers, fruits, vegetables, spices, herbs, nuts, and seeds. And I think I'm healthier than ever. I just turned 70 and that was the impetus to have my book published just before I turned 70 in January of this year, 2021. So I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do for St. Patrick's Day. I'm making a white bean and potato Irish stew. And I'm putting potatoes into this fat-free pan because the other thing I do is I eat lots of fat, but I eat them from beans, seeds, nuts, um, the natural fats in things like soy. Uh, even oats have natural fats if it's a whole grain oat. And that's where I get my healthy fats. And I avoid using fat in other ways because the processed oils that come from olives and canola seed and sunflower seed are all not only processed but really high in the omega-6s which tend to be inflammatory you're going to hear me use the word to the gut all the time the gut is our microbiome and our microbiome is what keeps us healthy in all ways because the only thing the microbiome and the bacteria in the gut eat are fibers, the soluble and non-soluble fibers. And the only thing that has any fiber at all is plant food. And so I pretty well stick with that, whole food. And as processed as I get might be a jar of peanut butter, uh, I like my whole foods. So what I've just done is I've created a browning effect in this empty pan and this is how I keep the flavor intense as if I was browning it in oil. I'm adding a little bit of broth. This is my own broth. I keep a bag in the freezer. Some of you could say this along with me because you've seen my videos and know that um, I make my own broth. Why not? From all the scraps of vegetables that we have like carrot peelings and the ends of, let's say, a head of celery and the, my entire bunch of last week's parsley and cilantro. Carrot tops, I stopped at the farm store and got carrots and carrot tops. Some kale stems, not too much of the brassis, the brass, braxi, <laughs> braxius, braxisis, darn it the um, vegetables that are um, from the cabbage family, uh, like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, um, even arugula, because uh, they can give a soup or a broth a bit of a cabbage-y family, which I uh, cabbage -y flavor, which is fine if that's what I want, but sometimes I have a much lighter flavored dish that I'm making and so I, I don't want that strong of a flavor in the the broth. So if you take a look, you can see that the, the onions are getting nicely browned and that's where you get a lot of flavor. And this is going to be a two-part video, but you won't know it. It'll all be put together because I'm going to get it started and I'm going to get it started with my vegetables that need to cook for 45, 50 minutes, as well as a grain. I could have used barley, which would have been very Irish, but I can't have gluten. And therefore, one of the grains I love, and I, 
I like sorghum and I like millet and I like um, amaranth and quinoa, which is a seed. Um, but I like the texture, which is similar to barley and similar to wheat of oat groats. So I have oat groats in my strainer. I wash all of my grains, even brown rice, all the grains, because they sit in silos and get dusty and things walk on them. And so I rinsed my oat groats. You can get them on Amazon. I have a health, a whole food store near me. And I usually do this two to three times. I don't want it to stick and burn, but I also absolutely want it to um, continue to caramelize because that's what onion will do. I'm gonna add garlic, but I'm not gonna add it this near the, or the this um, at this point because if it gets too brown, the garlic will simply burn and then it gets bitter. I think I'm done with this. And now what I'm going to add, and I just realized as I'm talking to you that I didn't bring my garlic here, but I will grab it and add it. So consider that I've added several cloves of garlic, two to three. And I have chopped carrot and celery. The recipe will be with this uh, video. So you will have a recipe for this. And I'm adding, and you can see that my carrots are cut in nice sized chunks. They look so pretty in a stew that way. And they still fit in the mouth. And then I'm adding, in this case it was two pounds of russet potatoes cut into chunks. Again, nice sized chunks. Because I want this stew to have a real kind of a, a family soup bowl kind of a look and feel to it where it's really chunky. If this were a stew with meat and I don't buy meat and I don't use meat, if this were a stew with meat, we would have chunks of things in there, the vegetables to kind of match the, um, oh, I'm going to say the, the look and feel of the meat. But in this case, you can see how pretty this is. Lots of chunky, big chunk vegetables. And I also have the um, rinsed um, oat groat that's going to give me a grain in there. Now, later, you're going to see me add the rest after these cook. But let me tell you what I did. These are my beans. The recipe simply calls for white beans, white kidney beans, which people call cannoli beans, cannellini beans, excuse me. Well, I had a bag of cassoulet beans from a great place called Rancho Gordo, and they have heirloom beans and um, well-sourced, um, a lot of well-sourced, interesting foods, um, mainly grains and some spices and some herbs. And so I had a bag, a one-pound bag, and I went ahead and cooked it in my air pot. You can look at my website, nansimmonson.com, under recipes, and you'll see how I cook garbanzo beans to be used as beans as opposed to be used as a, um, uh, as a, a, a brothy, beany kind of a soup to you know, make and then go on into a soup. Well, I have a large amount of beans still left. Well, these will go in here as will cabbage as well, and I'm gonna put this in now, some thyme, some rosemary, called for dried rosemary, but I have my own rosemary on hand. It also called for bay leaf. I also have a bay laurel that I keep as a bush. They get huge as a tree, but I keep it as a bush. You know what, I think I'll put two, I don't need three in there. It can be a little caustic if you put too much. But the rosemary called for um, half a teaspoon and I put three times that much because I'm using fresh rosemary out of my garden. So thyme, rosemary, and a caraway seed. That's where you're getting that kind of Irish flavor because the caraway, you would get that flavor that you get in an Irish stew, usually, especially on St. Patrick's Day, has something to do with corned beef. And that's one of the seasonings they use in corned beef. And then eight cups water, but actual, or broth, but actually more, and if you're wondering about this layer, 
I don't know if you can see yeah, you can see it. Um, I couldn't throw the broth of the beans away. It tasted so good, and that's why you're gonna to wanna to look at my recipe for the garbanzos, because the broth is flavored by things that I use to give the beans a wonderful flavor. And, oops, excuse me. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put more. What, when you make this, you're gonna think, well, Nan, you had so much more than I have here. I don't like making anything that I'm not getting a great volume out of, because if I'm gonna put the time in to mess things up and cook things, I want it especially worthwhile. I wanna package several meals of this to put in the freezer. I have someone coming for dinner and it's, yes, well, let's see. Well, if you're doing any um, compare, or if you're, you're thinking of, of the date, you're thinking, wait a minute, COVID's still flaring, but we are getting together more now. And I've been vaccinated and the person coming is vaccinated. So I called and said, hey, I've got this big pot of soup. Why don't you come for dinner? She was very excited about that. And um, anyway, you're going to see that the recipe makes uh, uh, enough for six people. If I was going to do this, I figured I'm going to do whatever I can to fill the pot. And so I have, again, the recipe. So you're going to see that I'm putting in more than you would uh, if you were just following the recipe. When this is uh, tender, and that'll be about 45 minutes, I'm going to put in canned tomato. I could have used a can and a half, but I figured uh, this is enough tomato. I'm going to use, the recipe calls for three cans of beans or three cups. I'm putting in four and a half, almost five. And then I'm gonna put a bunch of cabbage in there. And I have just enough room left in this pan to do all of that. So I'll have this marvelous stew. If the stew is not liquid enough, because I like a lot of liquid, I'll simply add more of my broth. Yesterday I did a huge pan of broth. Um, made a huge pan of broth out of my frozen vegetables. I had a lot left in the freezer that I hadn't um, made previously. So I had to use a stock pot bigger than this, but it's really fun because now I have all this broth to do things with. So I'm gonna leave you now. I'm gonna put this on medium high, bring it to a simmer. I'm sorry, bring it to a boil, then turn it to a simmer. I'll get back to you. Um, to put these in and then I'll even get back to you one more time and show you the finished stew, okay? Bye. Okay, part two. I have been cooking the stew, Irish bean and potato stew now for 45 minutes. I can see that the oat groats have volume to them and they're, mm, mm. I love the toothiness of them. And oat groats have kind of an earthy flavor. They're actually, I think they're marvelous. I use them for everything. And that's what I make my oatmeal with because I like all that extra fiber. It's like eating a wheat berry rather than um, wheat flakes. Okay, now I'm adding four and a half cups. <laughs> Watch me throw the whole thing in, bowl and all. <laughs> all right, four and a, half, and a half cups of the beans that I cooked this morning in the Instant Pot. I soaked them overnight, cooked them in the Instant Pot 35 minutes. Again, go on my website and you'll get a really savory uh, dry bean recipe. Uh, in this case, it was for garbanzo beans, but it would be fine with any other. And um, now I'm adding, you can see I needed this big pot. And after I turned the video off last time, I decided to simply add more broth because I knew I'd need it. So I think we're up to maybe, I don't know. Well, I did an, a, a recipe and a half, but I think I'm up to at least 12 cups of broth and it may be more. I like a brothy stew. I like a lot of broth on the spoon. There, okay. So this is what it looks like now. I want that cabbage to get soft. Some people say, oh no, don't cook it and, and let the cabbage be crunchy. Well, in a St. Patty's Day boiled dinner, 
or you have cabbage, potato, carrot, and um, the, the corned beef, and this is vegan, of course. Um, the cabbage is rather soft, and I like it that way, really flavorful. And mm, I'm gonna add a little bit more of my dry seasoning. The one thing I did that I didn't show you is that I have a, a skimmer, and I, I learned this a long time ago. When you're working with anything, like either dry beans or grains, sometimes even certain vegetables, you may get a foamy top layer. And I like to skim that off. It wasn't even that much, but you can kind of see it. And I skimmed the foamy top layer off, but now that it's gone, and you can see there's some, well, you may not be able to see, there's some of the herbs that were on the top as well, not all of them, but some. And so I'm, I added back a little bit. It smells so good. Now what I'm not sure of is whether or not I'm gonna be able to get, nope, can't get the cover on because the pot is so full, which is fine. Okay. And I don't wanna to forget to thank Susie from Fat Free Vegan for this recipe. She actually, it was actually provided through Forks Over Knives and that's a great publication for wonderful whole food plant-based recipes. And Susie of Fat Free Vegan um, was the one that um, that submitted this. All right, so I'll be back to you when everything is done. And you know what? There is nothing better than a soup that has had time to set a while. I like a soup better the next day. Soup stew, chili, I like them better the next day. This will be cooked, it's, gosh, it's three o'clock, so it doesn't really have time to sit long, but it's going to be prepared well before I serve it. And then I'll heat up just a little bit if it still needs to be heated for the dinner and just let it sit for a while. Um, I just think the flavors marry especially well that way. So this is it, and then it'll be served and you'll see what it will look like on a plate. <laughs> Thanks, bye. Oh boy, it's finished. I'm so excited. I have such a big pot of Irish white bean and cabbage stew. It smells delicious. No, I haven't even tasted it yet. We have a bowl of it poured. Put a little more in there. Remember, this is a lean, lean soup. There's no fat in it at all. And this is how I would present it. I would put some, I like cilantro. You may want to put parsley on it to green it up a little bit. I would then add some raw onion because there's cooked onion in it, but I also like the alienase from raw onion, and this is simply spring onions. And it's classic to serve a Irish meal that comes with corned beef with sour cream. That kind of tang is wonderful. Well, this is my version of sour cream and I love it. And it is my tofu sour cream. You'll see that on my website under recipes. Another thing you'll see are these beautiful and delicious corn muffins. This is the recipe, it's on my website. This is another one that's going to be following. It's a gluten-free bread that is nothing but three whole grains mixed together. And it's dense and moist and delicious. And then I would serve this with a kale salad. I just made this for tonight. This is my orange dressing. And if you look at my website, you'll see a kale salad with an orange and ginger dressing, a whole orange, some dates, some flavoring ingredients, and it's a whole food that we're using as a salad dressing. Oranges are plentiful now. This is the season, so why not take advantage of it? So stew, some hearty bread, a nice kale salad. What more could you want? Oh, by the way, I didn't mention that I also added some, a can of diced tomatoes in there. Or did I say that? I don't remember. Anyway, I did. Oh, I know, I didn't show them to you when I was showing you the final um, addition of ingredients. But yes, that's when the diced tomatoes went in. So I hope you give this a try. Have a great St. Patty's Day week. Enjoy Wednesday, St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March. 
and we'll see you again soon. And by the way, share this if you would, let people know that we can all age powerfully together by eating lots of plants, whole foods, plant-based, as often as possible. Bye-bye.